Hi, this is teacher Alex from Phuket Pulse. Welcome to the next GD Science screencast episode 4 on test questions. If you find this video useful in any way, please hit the subscribe button below so we can help more people like you. Alright, our first question is on reading tables and understanding key vocabulary. Let's have a look on the right first. Chemical processes can be categorized as endothermic and exothermic. Examples of each type of process are listed in the following table. Endothermic processes. Melting ice cubes, cooking an egg, producing sugar by photosynthesis, evaporation of water. Making ice cubes, exothermic, a candle flame, burning sugar, Condensation of rain from water vapor. Which generalization can be made based on the examples in the table? A reaction that releases heat is endothermic. A reaction that releases energy is exothermic. Exothermic reactions have a net increase in energy. Endothermic reactions neither absorb nor release heat. We can answer the question without knowing the vocabulary, but these are definitely terms you should put on your list and practice to memorize. These terms are exothermic, endothermic and heat. Exothermic means releasing heat or giving out heat. Endothermic means absorbing heat or taking in heat. In general, two prefixes very important to remember for the GD science are the prefixes exo and endo. Exo meaning out or outside, endo meaning in or inside. Besides exothermic, endothermic, we have other terms like an endoskeleton, an exoskeleton. We humans have an endoskeleton, our skeleton is on the inside of our body, whereas a crab, for example, has an exoskeleton or the hard parts that protect its body, that give its body stability, are on the outside. You know, a crab, everything on the inside is soft, everything on the outside is hard. Then the term heat. Heat is a form of energy arising from the random motion of the molecules of bodies, which may be transferred by conduction, convection or radiation. So heat is usually thought of a transfer of energy that arises from the motion of particles. So if we look at our table, what do melting ice cubes, cooking an egg, producing sugar by photosynthesis and evaporation of water have in common? Third part, maybe not as obvious, but these three melting ice cubes, cooking an egg and evaporation of water, definitely if you take an ice cube into your hand, your hand cools down. If there is water on your skin that evaporates, your skin feels cold, cools down. Cooking an egg requires heat, so all these processes absorb or take in heat from the environment. We know as well that photosynthesis requires light energy, so heat is transferred during the reaction and taken in during the reaction to produce glucose. Exothermic processes, we see the opposites here, making ice cubes. A candle flame definitely releases heat, burning sugar releases heat, burning something, condensation of rain from water, making ice cubes is probably not as obvious, but these release heat energy as well. And to find the right answer, we have to know that heat is a form of energy. And if we look again, let's have a look at A, a reaction that releases heat is endothermic. No, it is not a, re a reaction that absorbs heat is endothermic. Let's have a look at C. Exothermic reactions have a net increase in energy. No exothermic reactions have a net decrease in energy since the energy comes out so the system itself loses the energy. The energy has to come from somewhere. 
We have the law of conservation of energy. We cannot create or destroy energy. Energy can only be transferred when an exothermic reaction releases heat to the surrounding. That means the heat must come from somewhere. It comes from the reaction system, which loses the energy. Endothermic reactions neither absorb nor release energy. Nope, they do one of the two. They <coughs> absorb heat energy. So B must be the correct answer. A reaction that releases heat energy is exothermic. Okay, our next question. Look, this question is on, again, key terms and inferring from the paragraph. The European wood wasp is an invasive species that is thought to have been accidentally introduced into the United States in a wood shipment in 2004. The European wood wasp feeds on pine trees. It can also carry a fungus that kills pine trees. The introduction of the European wood wasp is most likely to disrupt pine tree forests ecosystems in which way? By increased competition among consumers, loss of habitat for tree dwelling organisms, water contamination by decaying pine trees, disease transmission to other insect species. <clears throat> so these are all examples of disruptions. First let's have a look uh, at our important vocabulary here. So an invasive species is a species that is not native to a specific location, an introduced species, and that has a tendency to spread to a degree believed to cause damage to the environment, human economy, or human health. <clears throat> Here, our wood wasp is our introduced species, which came over to the US by a wood shipment in 2004 from Europe. Then we have the term disrupt in our question. Disrupt means to prevent something, especially a system, in this case our ecosystem, process or event from continuing as usual or as expected. So our ecosystem is not the same anymore as it was before the introduction of the European wood wasp. An ecosystem itself is a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. So all the organisms in a specific area interacting with themselves, with other organisms, plus the non-living environment like the air, rocks, water, and so on. So how does our European wood wasp disrupt the ecosystem? What other information do we get in the text? We get the information that they feed on pine trees and we get the information that they can carry a fungus that kills pine trees. So they affect pine trees. All the other examples or possible answers are all examples of possible disruptions but only one is supported by the paragraph above. We do not get any information on competition. We do not get any information on water contamination. And we do not get any information on the transmission of diseases to other insect species. The only information that we get is that they feed on pine trees and that the fungus they may carry can kill pine trees. So from this we can infer that the number of pine trees will very likely decrease in the ecosystem. If pine trees decrease, that means that species that live on pine trees lose habitat. So that means B must be the correct answer. Let's come to our last question for the screencast. A short one. <clears throat> this is a question simply about assumed knowledge. We have the equation of photosynthesis below. 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O plus energy gives us C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Which of these 
correctly identifies the products in the equation. So the question is for products. We have to know what products are in a chemical reaction. On the left side we have the reactants and on the right side we have the products. So we have to look at the right side of our reaction C6, H12O6 and O2. And it is assumed that we know what these two are. Not necessarily this molecule, but since it's photosynthesis, you should know that the products of photosynthesis are glucose and oxygen. So here in the translation of the molecules we are given in the reaction CO2, carbon dioxide, H2O, water, C6H12O6 is glucose and O2 is oxygen. Here is the arrow, so that means everything on this side belongs to the reactants part, everything on this side to the product part. The products are glucose and oxygen. Answer A. That's it for episode 4 test questions on GED science. Thanks from me, teacher Alex, and I hope I could help you this time as well. See you next time.